The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar, Basics of Binary Options and Knockouts, here at Nadex. My name is Todd Rich. I am head of education here, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is, it should be a fun session. Um, we are going to be jumping into uh, you know, a demo platform, but it is live markets, and we're going to go through what are binary options, what are knockouts, how do you use our platform, some of the cool tools that we've got available. So should be a fun session. Uh, before I jump into it, let me, uh, I do have to take care of a housekeeping item. Uh, we do this at the beginning of all of our webinars. Uh, I do need to put this disclaimer up per our compliance department that trading does indeed involve risk and that all trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. One important thing here that I would like to point out is this is an education session. As I mentioned, I'm going to be probably jumping around in a demo environment, a demo account. If you don't have a demo account at Nadex, I recommend it. It's a great way to learn our products and practice a little bit. Plus you learn how to use the tools and the platform. Uh, before you start going into live markets, we find that people who practice first uh, tend to perform better in the markets because they're more familiar with how to operate the platform and they become a little bit more comfortable with the products themselves. But I don't want you to take anything I say today as a buy or sell recommendation. This is strictly for your education purposes only. So even though I'll be playing around with, they will be live prices. Uh, it is what's in the markets for the most part. Um, Please do not take anything I say as a buy or sell recommendation. I am just doing this for education. Now, what are we gonna to cover today? Now, I'm gonna go through binary options first. It's our most popular product. What are they? Uh, I'll define them, explain them. Uh, I'm gonna show you. Uh, I, I think a lot of times it's easier just to see it. It makes a lot more sense and it really resonates. I'm going to do the same with knockouts. And we'll go through examples on each one of those and maybe even place a few practice trades. Uh, but I will be using the Nadex platform. So that's the introduction. I really want to get into it. The other thing I'd really like to uh, emphasize, two things. One, I am recording the session. This is being recorded. People always ask. It's a, it will be available on our YouTube channel. I would recommend that you go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to it. You'll catch all of our content as we put it up on YouTube. It will also be located on our website. In fact, I would recommend and I will show you uh, on our website, you can go to our webinar section. You can see all of our upcoming webinars and then there's an archive as well. So you can watch anything that we've done in the past. We curate that a bit as uh, content becomes older, but you can find some great educational content on our website. All right, I am, uh, oh, the other thing I want to mention, and this is really important, this is an interactive session. Please, please, this is interactive. I've got a colleague of mine, Sophie, in the background. Ask her questions. There's that little question box. In fact, if you want, it would be great if you could just chime in now. Hey, Sophie, thanks for backing Todd up. Uh, just keep her awake. So please type questions in there. If I go too fast, if I cover, uh, if I don't, cover something that you really wanted to know more about. If you've got questions about our your account or signing up or demo versus live, engage with Sophie. She is an expert and you've got access to her right now. So please, uh, as I'm going, I will try to pay attention to some of those questions to make sure that I'm answering for the broader audience. Truth is, if you've got a question, prob uh, probably somebody else has the same question. And I want to make this as beneficial to everyone as I can, but I will be moving through the content. Uh, but please, engage with Sophie. She's back there to help you out, and it's really nice that she's there. All right, I am now going to jump over to our platform. And we're going to, let me do this real quickly. Uh, we're excited. We've got a new website, something that we've uh, been working on for uh, quite a while. So if you haven't 
uh, really taking a tour around our website. I will point out that there is this webinar section. And if you go to the webinar section, you'll find our archive. Uh, there's also some content in our learning section, which we are constantly updating. In fact, over the next couple of weeks, there's a platform tutorial section where we break down a lot of what I'm covering today in three short three to four minute videos uh, that you might want to go back and review, uh, as well as maybe this entire session. So there's a lot of educational content. We're constantly building out more. We want to make you successful. Uh, anything we can be doing to help you uh, also helps us. If you're successful, then we're successful. I also want to point out that if you need to contact us, you can find out how to contact us here. And one of those ways is down here in the right-hand corner, there's this chat box. Uh, this is some new functionality we, that we've put in. I'd recommend that you use this too. Uh, we're here to help. Uh, go ahead and chat with us. We will get back in touch with you and we'll help you with anything that you, uh, that you need. Okay. Um, and I do see some great questions coming in early and I will definitely get to them about uh, when you're trading knockouts and if you have a position, what your potential risk and reward are and how if you even want to exit a trade early, uh, even for binaries for that matter as well. This is will all be covered in this session. So uh, good, let's get into it. Let's get, let's get going where everyone wants to go. I am going to log into the platform. Now, as I mentioned, I am currently in a demo environment. It says demo. If you don't have a demo account, again, I'd recommend you practice with one. Uh, there is a different experience between a demo and a live environment. I will tell you that. The prices that you see in a demo environment will roughly mirror what's going on in a live environment but your interaction with the market will distinctly be different. Uh, if you wanted to put a order between the bid ask spread, which you can absolutely do, more people are looking at it in a live environment than in a demo environment and the experience will definitely be different. So I, I just want you to think or, or realize that you can practice in a demo, you can get really comfortable with it, but when you go to the live markets, the experience with the marketplace itself will necessarily be different. All right, today I am going to start, uh, by the way, a quick layout of the platform, uh, our new platform. We're excited about this. If you're not using it, you've got on the left-hand side where you'll find our products, very clean, simple, easy, binary options, call spreads, knockouts, your positions pane at the bottom, and uh, we'll get into that, but I am going to use these double blue lines over here, and we'll we'll put some, tr uh, some orders in, and you'll see how that changes what goes on in the positions pane and then your workspace which is the chart and the order ticket and that's where we're going to be spending most of our time uh, and uh, right now there's nothing there because I haven't clicked on anything yet so let's start with binary options and for fun uh, you know gold has been so popular lately uh, for a reason with what's going on in the markets flight to quality um, I'm going to go ahead and click on commodities and I'm going to take a look at what binary options we've got. Uh, we'll start with gold. Now notice when I click on those um, commodities uh, and you see the different commodities we've got for binary options and I'm going to look at gold here and we've got the different expirations. I'm going to go ahead and click on weekly. Uh, and let's bring up the weekly prices and you'll see all the different strikes that we've had this week in gold in binary options. I am going to just pick one of them. Here's a level, 1959.50. That looks uh, right about, uh, and you notice we also tell you where gold is currently trading. Uh, you'll get the indicative price right here um, in the product section. So right around 1958. So that's actually why I am. In 1958.85, uh, I'm picking one that's you know roughly at the money. So let's go ahead and click on that. And I am now going to click on the markets section and hide that. When I clicked on that, uh, as you can see, we brought up a chart of the price of gold. If I want to customize my chart, uh, I can choose a, a date range. Um, what are we in? I think let's just go ahead and pick a weekly chart. Um, and maybe I want to see the week in 10 minutes. And here we have the week in 10 minutes. And when I'm in my chart, I can expand or uh, can collapse the chart by clicking and uh, just moving my mouse over here. I could zoom in or out. 
I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is right now. And as we can clearly see, gold has been, you know, it was in an uptrend. It sold off a bit and it's rallied back. Now, what am I trading when I trade a binary option? What is a binary option? A binary option is it's either yes or no. That is why it's a binary option. Um, it is, uh, it's either going to go to 100 or it's going to go to zero. That's it, a yes or no proposition. And what you're trading, the prices that you see, are the probability of this question being true. So we clicked on gold, and we our, our, our prediction here, what we can choose to predict, is will gold finish higher than 1959.50 at, at the end of the week, which is actually just is tomorrow, okay? We, we could see the expiration cycle here. So since gold is trading roughly right around our strike price, where, you know, our strike price 1959 and a half, and we are literally right here, the probability of this being true is 50-50, close to it. And that you see that being priced in the market. Uh, if you actually went right between these, it would be 49%. There's a 49% chance. Now, if I thought gold was going to continue going higher, I could buy this contract. Notice when I click buy, it shades the chart where I would need gold to settle at the end of tomorrow for this to be a profitable trade. Now, if I wanted to buy one, let's go ahead and put an order in here. I'm going to put a right between the bid ask spread. Remember, this is a demo environment. Uh, I know when I put my bid in what my maximum risk or net maximum potential reward are before I enter the trade. So I'm going to go ahead and place the order. Notice that my order was received. We see it show up here. There's my one. And in fact, we also see it over here in my orders page. I'm trying to buy one at 49. Now, because this contract is either worth zero or 100, all right, my risk reward will total 100. If I paid 49, all right, that's the most that I can lose. I am risking $49 on a one lot, all right? And if I somehow, maybe I'll buy one, maybe I won't. If I buy it at 49 and gold settles higher than 1959 and a half, this contract will go to 100 and I would make $51. So I am risking 49 to potentially collect 100, which means I would profit $51. Uh, that's you know even money, if you will. Uh, roughly, that gold will settle higher, not trade higher, settle higher than 1959.50 in one day. Now, if gold does not settle higher, if it settles at 1959.50 or lower, this will go to zero and I would lose my $49. It is an all or nothing proposition. I'm risking, I know what my risk is before. I know what my maximum potential profit, uh, I know what my maximum potential gain, I mean my maximum potential profit, my maximum potential loss before I get into a trade. Now, um, if I actually thought no gold were going to go lower, let's go ahead and cancel this order. And I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I didn't trade, easy enough, I'm, I, I, I didn't do anything. Um, now, if I thought gold were going to go lower, I could sell it, okay? Uh, notice that gold has actually rallied a bit. And let's just say, I don't think it's gonna keep going and I wanna sell one at 49. So I'm gonna go ahead and place an order at 49. Uh, there we go. My order was received to sell one at 49. We see it down here in the orders. And there, there's my offer. Maybe it'll trade, maybe it won't. Oh, and it just did. OK, we actually take a look and this is a demo environment, not a buy or sell recommendation. Notice in my orders, I look now it's in my positions pane. I sold one. OK, I sold one at 49. Now, when I sold one at 49, all right, I now see on the chart in red where I would need gold to settle at expiration for this to be a profitable trade. If I sell, I want it to stay lower, I want it to be at 1959. 50 or lower. Now, if it settles higher, if it settles higher, this contract will go to 100 
and I will lose $51. And I know that that's the most I can lose. It told me that before I got into the trade. I can't lose any more than 51. If it settles below 1959, if it settles at 1959.50 or lower, the, um, it will. This contract will go to zero. All right, it'll settle at zero, and I sold it at 49. That's what I can make. I'll collect my $49. Okay, so I choose uh, a direction. Do I think gold is going going to settle higher? Or lower, yes or no. If I think yes, I buy. If I think no, I sell. And what I'm trading is the probability of this statement being true. So you'll notice uh, down below uh, the, the 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 probability for the 1949.50. Let's click on that one for a second. This one down here below, because gold is already trading higher than this. The probability of the question, will gold settle at 1949.50 or higher, will it be true? It's currently around 75%, all right, because gold's already above it. So here, I could change my probabilities. If I think gold were definitely going to stay above here, I could buy one of these. Let's just say I were to buy one for 75. Notice now, if I bought one for 75, I would be risking my 75 to potentially only make $25. So here I'm risking more to potentially make less, but the probability of success or the probability of that statement being true is higher because gold is already trading higher than the strike price. And notice up above the 1969 level, uh, notice here that because this strike price is higher than the current price, the probability of this statement being true is much lower. It's only a 22, 20, you know, roughly 22, 23%, which is right between the bid ask spread. So what I'm doing is I'm trading the probabilities of the statement being true. Now, just because I did a trade, doesn't mean I have to wait until expiration to see what happens. All right, I sold this one if uh, this one at 49. Okay, uh, if I decide that I'm wrong, I could just I I don't I do not I know let's say I'm going to put this back in. I sold it at 49. If I thought it was going to keep going higher and I made a mistake. I could buy it back now at 56.50 or 57.50 as gold continues ticking higher. Look at that. Um, I could buy it back for a partial loss. I could say, whoops, I made a mistake. I'm changing my mind. I think it's going to go higher. I can buy it back and experience a partial loss. I do not have to lose all $51. If my opinion changes, I can liquidate the position. Conversely, you know, if I, I don't have to try to collect since I sold it at 49, I don't have to try to collect all $49. Maybe I'd be happy making $20. All right. Maybe so if I sold it at 49, maybe I would buy it back lower at if I sold it at 49, maybe I'd buy it back at 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 29. That's $20 lower. So if I wanted to buy it back at $29 down below, I can put a bid below the market. I can get out early if I want. So uh, here, look, I'm, I'm putting a bid in for $29. Notice this is well below the market as it continues going higher. But if I place that order, all right, um, it sees I, I see that my order has been received. I'm going to go down to my order. I see that I'm, I'm trying to buy one lower. And even on the binary options, at least, it tells me that I sold one of these. I'm currently losing money on it because gold has gone higher and the probability has changed. But I'm trying to, I've got an order to buy one back down below. And maybe I buy it back or maybe I don't. And or maybe I change my mind and simply buy it back and then cancel that other order. Okay. So the point being is just because there's a settlement time, doesn't mean I have to wait until settlement to see what happens. I can liquidate early. I can either unwind for a partial loss or unwind for a partial gain before expiration, before settlement. Now, 
Uh, before I jump over to knockouts, right? I mean, and this is important. I'm trading probabilities here. And that's, I think, the biggest point is with binary options, I am trading a binary option. Uh, where it's either zero or a hundred and these are the probabilities now uh, another thing that I would like to point out because these can move pretty quickly I was using a limit order if I wanted to put in a market order uh, it would either buy or sell at the best price that are available so as gold keeps going higher if I just want to quickly buy this back I could click a market order place my order it received my order and I am out Okay, I just liquidated. I put a market order in and notice that my position is out. I took a partial loss. Um, this bid down below, I probably now want to delete because I no longer have a position. I'm gonna delete the order. Um, I have no position, I was wrong. I sold it, it went up. I bought it back for a partial loss. Had it gone my way, I could have potentially traded for a partial profit. So, um, now, gold is actually moving pretty quickly right now. What I would like to show you, I mean, this because this doesn't expire for a day, we do have other settlement times. I mean, look, uh, we've got, here's one that will settle in the next eight minutes for crude oil uh, or for gold. You can see the timer ticking down. Um, in fact, let's have a little fun. Let's just play with that for a second and see, I'm gonna go to a gold, and we're going to see how the price, you know what, I think it's actually better if I do it in a five minute, um, just because it'll be a little cleaner. Notice that in binary options, we have indices. So we do have global indexes, uh, as well as the US indexes, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. And again, we've got different settlement times, daily, weekly contracts. Uh, if you're into the uh, Dow Jones, here's the Wall Street 30. Foreign exchange pairs, I, I was showing you commodities. But here I wanna show you, we also have 20 minute uh, binary options. These are all in indexes. Let's have a little fun though. I'm gonna go into the five minute binaries. These are all in foreign exchange pairs. And you're gonna see how dynamic, um, well actually this is gonna, uh, this one's only got two minutes left uh, and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Um, if I catch one at the beginning of a cycle, it's it's a uh, it's a little bit more um, exciting to watch because uh, you'll see. You know, let's let's uh you know let's go ahead and go to gold, and we're going to click on the at the money one, and I'm going to move our chart, and let's watch what happens to this binary option. All right, as gold, well look at it as gold continues to go higher. Oh, it just started coming back down. What we're gonna see, this has got six minutes and 12 seconds to go. All right, this the, the clock is ticking here. And we can see, uh, the question is, is will it be higher than 1964.60? And it is right there and it's actually trading down. Did you see how the probability of this is jumping around pretty dramatically? As gold trades above 1964.60, the probability trades higher than 50%. As gold trades below, um, it it drops. I mean, look at as gold, I mean, gold's coming down, 1964.26. As it dropped, the probabilities on these, I mean, this is, this is moving around again, this is a demo environment, but you can see how quickly the probabilities of this are uh, and how quickly the price moves, because look at this, gold just jumped all the way up to 1964.70. It went above, uh, and these probabilities are moving around pretty dramatically. Uh, and maybe I think it's going to finish higher. Let's just go ahead and buy one. Um, all right, I just sent in a market order, uh, and I paid 50, it looks like, let's hide this. Oh, did I place the order? I thought I placed the order. Oh, maybe I didn't hit the button. Um, oh, that's strange. 
All right. I don't know why I ran into, oh, you know what? I'm in a, I mean, sometimes you run into issues in the demo environment. So anyhow, uh, the more to the point is these probabilities move dramatically in binary options, particularly as you get closer and closer to the settlement time with four minutes to go. Okay, now what I'd like to do is jump over to knockouts, uh, which I think are a little bit more intuitive of a product. Uh, when we jump over to knockouts and my platform, you know what it is, my platform froze. I am going to have to um, log out and log back in quickly. Uh, this is being done over the internet and sometimes the internet doesn't always cooperate. So let's log out and let's log back in and see if that's going to solve my problem. Okay, let's go to knockouts. Okay, there we go. We're back into knockouts. Now, what is a knockout? Here I'm gonna try, uh, I'm gonna play around with the S&P 500. Let's go ahead and click on one of these knockouts and let's take a look at what we're talking about for knockouts. And here, um, uh, I'm going to adjust my chart. Let's uh, go ahead and take uh, a daily chart in the S&P 500, and I want to see a one-minute chart. You know, let's look at five minutes. That's actually kind of fun. Okay, here's a five-minute chart of a daily. It's on the S&P 500, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, and let's zoom this chart in a little bit. So we can get all of the different knockouts or at least some of them on the range. What am I trading when I trade a knockout? A knockout is a Delta one product, all right? I am actually trading the price, the underlying. So now I'm not trading probabilities, okay? Now it's, it's a little bit more intuitive to, um, I, I can see where the S&P 500 is currently trading. It's 33.79 and a half. Here it is, 33.79 and a half. And a knockout has a range, all right? It has a floor and a ceiling, and it tells you what that range is, 33.60, 34.10. And here's my 33.60. It's very distinct on the chart, and here's my ceiling. Ceiling and floor. If I were, if I were interested in a different range, I could choose a different knockout. Notice they're in blue over here, all right? And you can choose whichever range suits you best. I'm going to go ahead and choose this, this range here, the 3360 to 3410. Now, because it's a Delta one, what that means is the price that I see, the prices that I'm trading will be roughly around the current indicative price. If I thought the S&P 500 were going to go higher, I buy. If I thought it were going to go lower, I sell. So let's go ahead and take a, let's say I want to buy. I think it's going to keep going higher. Okay. And notice that I, my expiration is in one day and three hours. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just buy one of these. All right. My order was received down here and I've got a position. Okay, I bought one. Uh, now, what am I looking to do here? What is my what What am I doing when I buy one? When I buy one, I, and I think I paid roughly right here, thirty three eighty sixty. I think is is, is what I got. Uh, since I bought one, I've got a floor and a ceiling on this trade. If if the S and P five hundred were to go higher, and it were to touch thirty four ten. I would get knocked out of the trade. That's why it's called a knockout. And I would get knocked out for my maximum potential profit. I know before I get into the trade that I could potentially make $294 on this one lot. That is the most I could make. And that's what I'm looking for. I bought it. I want it to go higher. I want it to, um, and if it were to go up to 30, uh, 3410, I would make my maximum profit. Now, on the other side, since I bought one, if I were wrong and the S&P 500 were to go down and it were to touch 3360, I would get knocked out. That is essentially my stop loss. I would get knocked out and I would lose $206, okay? So I know going into a trade what my maximum potential profit and maximum potential loss are on a knockout either way. 
All right. Now, if I want to do, uh, if I thought it were going to go lower, I could sell one of these and it would be the exact opposite. Uh, let's just keep this as 338060 uh, and turn this into a sell. So let's just do, what did I, uh, 338060. I want to, I just want to put in the same price that I, I bought. If I had sold, it would be the other way around. Um, notice if I sold it, I want it to go down, and if it went down to 3360, that's where I would make my money. I'd make potentially make $206. But if it were to continue going higher and it were to touch 3410, I would now have my maximum loss of $294. All right, but I bought one, so um, you know I I don't want to confuse things. Let's just leave it there. Uh, 338060, which is where I bought it. Okay. Now, that is going to beget the question, what happens if it doesn't touch either one of these boundaries? If in the next one day and three hours, the S&P 500 were to stay in between this range, my profit, it will settle. The product will settle in one day and three hours, and whatever price it settles at, I will then have a partial profit or partial loss based upon where it settles. So let's think about that. I bought one at 338060. Um if it were to settle below 338060, I would have it would I would have a partial loss, but I know that I can't lose more. I cannot lose more than $206 because if it got down to 3360, I would be knocked out of my long trade and that would be it. I would that's the most I could lose. But if it were to settle between 30 where it is now in 3360, I would have some type of partial loss up to a maximum of $206. Now let's assume that I'm correct. Let's go the other way. If it goes higher, I paid 338060. If it goes higher, I will have, and it doesn't touch 3410, I will have a partial profit. Uh, somewhere up to a maximum of $294. Because if it touches 3410, I'd be knocked out for a maximum profit. That's my profit goal. Now, do I have to wait until settlement to see what happens? And the answer is no. Just like I did with the, the binary option. Remember, I sold it and bought it back. I was I just I decided I was wrong. I took a partial loss. If this were to start going lower and I wanted to sell it for a partial loss and not because it's I think it's going to go lower than 3360 I can always just sell it and get out on the flip side if I want to take a partial profit all right I don't have to wait for it to settle um, as I mean it's ticking up right now a little bit but I don't think it's going to get to 3410 uh, by the end of tomorrow but I do think it's going to going to get to 3395. Okay, let's say I would sell it here at 33. In fact, let's just go ahead before I even show you that. Actually, let's go ahead. Let's just put an offer uh, an offering up above. I would sell it if it went up to 3395, so I'm going to put a 3395 in. That is above the current price. All right? But I would sell it there as to take a profit. I'm going to go ahead and place my order. And we know that I've got a long position that I bought Oh, actually, I bought it at 33.8040, so I did better than I thought I did. I paid 33.8040, and I would sell it at 33.95. Okay, and it's you know look at it started ticking down here, so I can put a profit goal up above, and if it touch if it if my, that order executes, I'll be out of the trade. Uh, my profit goal doesn't have to be the full thirty, uh, you know, the full potential profit. I don't have to wait for it to get all the way up to thirty four ten. I can get out of a trade early. Now, um, what I would like to do, hopefully, that has helped you understand binary options and knockouts, uh, what I would like to do is show you some of the tools that we've got to help you with your decisions. So let's just take a one day, here's a, a one day 10 minute chart of the S&P 500. And let's go ahead and expand it a little bit. We do have, and by the way, uh, we do sessions 
on the platform. My colleague Adam McCaden did one yesterday. Uh, he, he does them every couple of weeks, and he, he does show a lot of this different functionality. Um, I'm, I'm also going to tease up. We're going to be doing a full-blown educational summit in a few weeks, in the first week of September, so stay at uh, tune for that, where it's going to be a three-day educational event, four hours of education each day. We're doing it with our colleagues uh, over at Daily FX and at IG, uh, where you can get some education about the markets, uh, about trading your product. We're going to do a whole day on commodities, a whole day on indices, and a whole day on foreign exchange. Um, but in there, there'll also be some discussions about the tools that are available to help you analyze the markets and make trading decisions. Uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a look at indicators. And we have a variety of technical indicators. You can choose whichever one you prefer. If you're not familiar with what they are, there is a little information icon that gives you some more uh, information. Uh, if you don't, if that's not enough, you can always do some research on your own. Uh, but I just want to give you an example. And you know what? I'm on Bollinger Bands. And if you aren't sure what they are, it, it's an indicator. It's a mathematical indicator that, that uses moving averages and standard deviations to put bands around the movement of the underlying to help you maybe identify where things are overbought or oversold. Let's go ahead and put Bollinger Bands on. Notice when I did that, um, oh, I don't want to leave, uh, leave this up here because I kind of like it. Notice when I did that, it did put the Bollinger Bands on here. And if you wanted to modify any of those parameters, I could click on Bollinger Bands. Uh, the standard is usually a, a, a 20 uh, period. Uh, band and it's usually two standard deviations you can customize this however you like okay but as you can see you can put some technical indicators that might help you in your trading decisions we also have drawing tools okay I'm gonna look over here and, and I'm gonna click on drawing tools uh, and uh, let's just have a little fun you know what let's go ahead and take Bollinger bands off for a second so it doesn't confuse things I'm gonna go ahead and pick a channel Okay, let's just put a channel on here. What is a channel? A channel is a trend um, that you might be seeing. And so the way we do this is I'm going to click on the bottom end of the trend. We can see we've kind of gone up here um, in the last few hours. So that's the bottom end of my channel. And then I can open it up and kind of cover the top end of my channel. And I've put that channel in there now. Did I draw that exactly right? I don't know. Um, you can always choose to put your, cha you know, your channel in a little differently. Uh, maybe I want to adjust it a little bit, so I'm adjusting it some uh, by grabbing, you know, the places where I can adjust. Okay, so there, there's a, there's a slightly different channel. So how you set it up, but what that might tell you in theory is, you know, when it gets to the upper end of this, it might be a selling opportunity. When it gets to the lower end of it, it might be a buying opportunity. Again, not a buy or sell recommendation, just showing you how you can draw channels on your charts. Um, you can put in your own support and resistance lines using uh, horizontal lines. You can, I mean, there's there's all sorts of things that you can uh, put in here. Uh, let's take a look at Fibonacci, all right, a Fibonacci retracement. If you're not familiar with Fibonacci, again, there's information. This is a ratio that is seen in nature and architecture and the human body. People tend to look for these patterns uh, in the markets. So let's go ahead and delete all drawings. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and draw a Fibonacci on here. And let's take a look at the... You know, I'll start it all the way back here. So um, to do a Fibonacci retracement, I click on the Fibonacci. And since we are in an uptrend, uh, I'm going to click down here in the lower left-hand corner and sort of draw my trend that I'm seeing. It's roughly an uptrend, and I'm going to click in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, now that I did that, what does Fibonacci tell me? It's again, it's a mathematical relationship where you there are levels, there are percentage levels where you might see support and resistance. And it, I mean, oddly enough, in, in this particular sequence, when I started down here, uh, 
the S&P definitely rallied all the way through. I mean, it kind of got choppy um, when it did a rally um, earlier uh, yesterday. But in the last day or so, these levels have sort of been true. You can see that this level here was a resistance level. It, 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 it you know, actually it had come down. It was a support level, right? Right around this 3370, we saw when it came down, and it supported. It supported. It bounced off of it. It went to this level 3375, which was resistance. It came back down. It went through this support all the way down to the one beneath it, and the one beneath it became a support. And then it rallied back up, and then this became resistance. The same level that was support earlier is now resistance, and you see it having resistance. And it broke down two more levels, and we saw support. And then it rallied back up, and this level, the two levels higher, became resistance. And you see how it constantly became resistance, and it stayed in this this little channel until it, you know, it tried to break through, and then it did. It broke through, and now we're tending to see. Uh, what was this? This is um, this was the support. One, two levels higher is now the resistance, and we're seeing it bounce off of this. And we might uh, actually, in theory, see it try to get up to this level, uh, 33.82, before we start. So, so it might bounce around in here for a little bit. Now, again, not a buy or sell recommendation. I'm simply demonstrating how a Fibonacci uh, retracement. Uh, kind of works. If you want to learn more about that, um, there's a lot out there. But we offer these tools, both indicators, and there is a variety of indicators, as well as drawing tools for you to customize your charts. Uh, one thing I would like to point out, um, and I just did I did I erase my uh, all my drawings? Maybe I did. I might not have intended to, but I might have addressed my drawings. Okay. I was going to show you, um, if I, you right-click on your chart, you actually can save a layout. So if you actually went through and set everything out the way that you like it, um, you could save your layout, and then you can uh, apply a saved layout in any of our markets, and you'd be able to you know, use your chart however you like it, whether you're trading binary options, knockouts. Uh, I am going to mention call spreads briefly. Uh, knockouts, very clean. You have distinct levels where you would get knocked out. Call spreads, similar to knockouts, except if it touches one of the boundaries, the levels, you are not knocked out of the trade. All right, you aren't. Uh, it's got its different ranges, and as you can see, here's the range on this uh, on this one. If it were to go up through the upper level, you would not be knocked out for a profit. Um, you'd actually have to sell it. And if it were to come down, um, you wouldn't be knocked out for a loss. If you were long it, you'd actually have to sell it. Um, and because you have that optionality, this will trade at a premium. Notice how this pr the indicative price is different than the underlying price because there's I mean now there's only three hours left. Um, if there were a longer period of time, the discrepancy or the disparity between the indicative price and the uh, prices that you could trade would be much larger. There is a premium in call spreads, all right, which makes it a little bit more complicated and complex of a product. People tend to like knockouts a bit because they are delta one they trade right in line um, people also really like binary options because it's a simple yes or no all or nothing proposition okay so uh I'm going to take a quick peek. I love that you guys have been keeping so uh, Sophie busy in the background. It looks like she's been answering um, a lot of your questions, particularly around some of the technical uh, indicators, uh, market and, and limit orders. Um, this is great. I, I, putting on your signals and using the, uh, the technical analysis on the charts, this is terrific. All great questions, it looks like. Uh, I, I, it's great. It looks like you've really kept Sophie uh, busy. Um, I don't think, and it looks like she got to all of your questions. Um, with that, uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed this session. I have recorded it. It will be available um, 
on de on demand on our website. Um, you know, I'm seeing uh, some la some last couple questions, uh, particularly around a fractional contract. Uh, we trade in whole contracts, one lots. Now, one of the benefits of our products, and uh, that I want to emphasize, in binary options, these are hundred dollar contracts. They're they're small. You do not need a lot of money to trade these. Uh, I can trade, uh, and let's just. And I'm going to go back into uh, gold here for a second. Uh, I could trade a gold binary option, and the fact that I can take a position on gold where uh, I can risk, you know, roughly 50 to make 50, these are very small contracts. They're designed for retail investors. Uh, but ultimately, what it's going to come down to is how much are you, the probabilities. Uh, what's the probability of you being right? Do you want to trade something that's got a higher probability or a lower probability? Uh, and then, again, once you put the trade on, you can always unwind it for a partial po partial profit or a partial loss. Now, those being $100 contracts, again, on the knockout side, uh, for the most part, they're $500 contracts. Um, where you're risking something less than 500 uh, to potentially make something less than 500. Uh, here, I'm going to bring these up. Right. So here, there, there's uh, now the only ones that aren't 500. The Nasdaq one is 600. The spreads are 600 points apart. Uh, a little bit more money, but again, uh, just because um, it's a $500 contract. Uh, you know, yes, you would need, if you were to buy one of these, you would need to have $181 because it is a fully collateralized contract. So you could do something, it's only 181, it's not less than 100, um, but uh, you can always also remember trade out early. And if you wanted to uh, pick something where your loss is uh, limited, um, let's just pick a different. If, if I thought the S&P were going to continue going higher, okay, notice how I picked a different binary, a different knockout option. Here, my floor is very close. Uh, if I thought the S&P were going to go higher I, and I bought one of these, the most I could lose would be $79. Here is where I could take a long position in the S&P 500. Now, if I'm wrong and it comes back down and touches 33.70, and it's only eight dollars above that right now, I would get knocked out and I would lose $79. But if it were to come, if I this is a way for me to choose a lower risk. Now, the higher potential reward, it'd have to go all the way up to 34.20 for me to make my profit. But um, I could always, you know, sell out of it early. So this is why people like knockouts is you can choose your risk parameters. And I, if I thought the S&P were going to be going lower and I wanted to sell one, this might be a better choice. Uh, because if I were selling one uh, and it were to go higher here, the ceiling is much closer where I would get, I would, um, I would get knocked out of my short trade and I would only lose $121 where I was looking for it to go down. So um, some great questions that you guys have had. Uh, hopefully we've, we've gotten, uh, we've, we've answered all your questions. Uh, again, this was recorded uh, on the website, under the webinar section in the archive, or on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and with that, I wanna thank you again for joining. Uh, please look at our webinar section for upcoming webinars. Remember, we got that, that education summit coming up in a couple of weeks. And I want to wish you all good luck in the markets.